everybody. Now we have the great honor to talk to Julio Martinez. Hello, Julio. How are you, young lady? I'm fine, and you, how are you? I'm doing great. I live in the greatest country in the world. I heard about that. So, uh, please introduce yourself and tell us what are you um, doing for the Veterans for America First? And I heard you were the director, or you are the director for Vets for Trump. I am, and uh, Vladimir Lemitz, who, who is my boss, mm -hmm. uh, he is uh, you know, uh, Russian ancestry. And uh, him and I have been working together for Trump well, for many years. Uh, we worked on the Trump campaign, and uh, him and I, uh, amongst others, his wife is also a veteran. You know, we're all uh, Army veterans, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we have to keep on plugging for the United States of America because otherwise we're going to lose it. Okay. So um, you are a uh, veteran uh, from the Vietnam War? Yes, I was in the Army from 1961 to 1967. Uh, I drove for a general uh, during the Vietnam War. And, uh, you know, I was uh, just serving my country. I, you know, I was born in Cuba, and when I turned 18, I told my mother, you know, I had just bought a brand new car, a brand new 1960 Chevy Impala. And I told my mother, I said, Mama, take me to the train station. She says, where are you going? I hadn't told her because I'm the only son. And I uh, says, uh, I'm, go I'm going in the army. She says, you're crazy. I said, no, I, I just owe this country so much that I want to represent our family uh, in the United States Army. And thank God, uh, you know, I didn't lose my life. I just lost my hearing. I don't hear well, but uh, that's a small price to pay to uh, keep our country safe. Yeah, thank you for your service. Well, I'll do it again if I have to. I think uh, most of the veterans would, would do that. Oh, yeah. Um, so, what are your um, jobs or what are, uh, what are you doing for the veterans for Trump? Well, the biggest thing mm -hmm. that I'm doing is this TV station. Mm -hmm. I built this mm -hmm. myself uh, uh, for us to get our message across mm -hmm. to the whole world. So if you have anything good to say about the United States of America, this is a place where you can say it. I don't charge anybody anything. Just come here and tell your story to the world because we have a lot of enemies that have a lot more money than we do, but we are right and they are wrong. So that's uh, basically the biggest thing that I do and I just talk to people all day long. You know, I'm a former mayor of the city of Hialeah. Uh, 30 years ago, I was, uh, I was the mayor of the city, which is the biggest Cuban community in the United States. Uh, the city of Hialeah is 80% Cuban. And I am the only, the only uh, Cuban veteran that ever served in the Hialeah's history. 96 years old, Hialeah is 96 years old. I had never had a veteran as mayor of the city. Wow. I'm very proud uh, to represent Hialeah, uh, which is, uh, you know, where I've lived since I came from Cuba in 1954. Um, we talked uh, before we had this interview about um, your feelings uh, about what's happened to the country right now. So in the, uh, you told me that uh, when Trump was in charge, it was the best America you ever ha seen, you ever have seen? Well, let me tell you, uh, uh, my meeting Donald Trump didn't happen in politics. Uh, I first met Donald Trump at one of his hotels in Atlantic City. I'm a boxing promoter. Wow, okay. Yeah, I'm a boxing promoter and we were doing a show uh, and I was uh, there and he tapped me on the shoulder and uh, you know we started talking and I didn't even know who he was. You know, it was Donald Trump. And we, we talked for a little bit and then a few years later, uh, a friend of mine that's also a Vietnam veteran, uh, uh, Ed McDougall, who was uh, also involved in politics, he was also a Vietnam veteran, calls me up and he says, say, uh, Julio, come and uh, meet a guy that I want you to see. So we met at uh, Doral's uh, Trump Hotel here in Doral. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh my God, <laughs> I'm meeting Trump again. And uh, he said, well, Donald Trump wants to run for president and he needs your support. Okay. 
So, uh, you know, Ed McDougall and I, you know, he lives uh, close to Homestead down south from here. And I, we started putting people together. And, uh, you know, everybody told him and I that we were crazy. This guy will never get elected president. Yeah, that's what we heard in Europe, that everybody is uh, was laughing about the idea that the hotel... Uh, Owner. Donald Trump, own, own, hotel owner who was never in politics runs for president for the first time and everybody said, ah, <laughs> he will never do it. Well, let me tell you a, a little story about that. I, uh, you know, there is a library here that everybody goes on election day with uh, politician signs. And I showed up with uh, the vice president of the Hialeah Republican Club that I'm president of. And uh, I showed up with two Trump signs. And we had you know, local politicians, I'm not going to name them because I don't want to give them free advertising. Uh, and they told me, he says, what in the world are you doing with Trump signs? Uh, we're going to elect somebody else. We have Marco Rubio, who is a senator, a Cuban, uh, and we have uh, Ted Cruz, who's also running for president. And I says, yeah, but I'm the only guy that ever shot a rifle and killed a communist. And I want this man to be our next president. He told me, they told me I was full of it, you know, full of crap. I don't want to use the other word. So uh, guess what? We won. Trump won, and he became president of the United States, the best president that I have seen in the United States since 1954 when I came from Cuba. Okay. So um, because in Europe, especially in Germany, we heard a lot about that Trump didn't do a good job. He he actually only um, was a, a clown or um, was uh, putting um, the country into war. But in my research, the first or the only president who didn't start a war was Trump. Even Obama, who got a prize uh, for uh, freedom and peace, he started a war. Of course. So what are your experiences in this time uh, with all these uh, criticizers? Well, I want to be a clown like Trump. Trump mm -hmm. was the best president under my uh, lifetime. I have never seen a better one, and I have seen many. You know, Eisenhower was a good president, also military. Uh, the worst president that we've had is Joe Biden, whomever is looking. I have the experience, whatever you, you're uh, listening to in Europe or anywhere in the world, I am a witness in this country and I wasn't even born here. So don't believe what you're hearing is lies. Trump is the best president that's ever lived in the United States of America this century. And I think he did a lot of for the um, Hispanic uh, people. Well, he did a lot for the blacks too, you know. Uh, most of my friends, and you know, I'm in boxing, so most of my friends are black. And um, most of my friends uh, know how to fight, you know, because uh, the ones that weren't in boxing were in the army with me. And we learned how to kill the communists. And if you're a communist, I'm sorry, don't come across me because I'm gonna try to kill you. Okay. And, uh, uh, I'm sorry, you know, and God forgive me because I don't want to kill anybody, but, uh, you know, it's either you or me if you're communists. And uh, communism is the worst form of government because they tell you what to do. I don't want anyone telling me what to do except God. And that's why I love this country and I love the Republican Party who does not believe in communism. Oh. So um, how can you... Um explain it that when Trump did so much for black people that there is a movement called uh, BLM. I, I saw them when I was in uh, Georgia last year when the first riot starts because of the um, George Floyd um, situation and drama, it was dramatic. But uh, actually, what do you think are the reasons behind this uh, Black Lives Matters thing? Because I heard a lot of um, things. One side, they are um, corrupt. One, uh, on the other hand, they would try to help the black uh, people here. Well, let me tell you, uh, 
Mr. Floyd didn't deserve to die the way he did, but he was a criminal. This guy was a criminal and the police officer went above what he was supposed to do, but he was fighting a criminal. Uh, I don't think what he did was right. Uh, he should have just put the handcuffs on him and taken him away. But Mr. Floyd was a criminal, folks. He was not a church-going nice guy. He was a criminal. And, uh, you know, he didn't deserve to die the way he did. He didn't deserve to die at all. But don't tell me that he was a nice guy and he, we should make him a hero. I am so sorry that people consider Mr. Floyd a hero. He was not a hero, folks. He was a criminal. And, uh, you know, most of my friends are black.